Hi there and welcome to the Turtleneck Sew Along. For this pattern you're going to need a fabric with really good stretch because this garment has got negative ease. So when I say really good stretch you need stretch across the body, cross body stretch or horizontal stretch from salvage to salvage of at least 80%, preferably 100%. And if you've got vertical um, stretch, so that's as if you were wearing the garment from neck to toe, you'll need a small amount as a minimum of vertical stretch as well. So at least 20% probably, um, just to enable this garment to fit your body properly. So this, as I said, is negative ease, so it's going to be a snug fit on you. You might need to do a test garment to make sure it works um, for the size you want. So let's start from the beginning. So the fabric I'm going to sew with today is a stretch waffle knit for the main and I'm going to use a Hatchie fabric or Hachi, I'm not quite sure how you say that, for my contrast. Um, they have a similar weight, a similar stretch and I know they'll go well together. Well, I'm hoping they will anyway. Right, so the seam allowance on this garment is six mil, quarter of an inch, so when you're ready Set your overlocker up with four threads of colour that match your main fabric and make sure the stitch width is set to six mil quarter inch. We also need access to a plain sewer for um, this contrast example. Um, this longer length tunic length has got splits in the side seam so we're going to need access to a plain sewer for that but for the majority of the garment I'm going to sew this with my overlocker. Now of course if you don't have an overlocker or serger you can generally find on home sewing machines that they have a stretch stitch option so you'll just need to go through your manual and work out which is the best stitch for the fabric you're using. Alright so um, this is actually a really quick sew so when you're ready let's just get started. So now I'm going to work on this sleeve with the inset view. If you have the sleeve that's just one colour you can skip this part of the video and move to the next sec section where we're going to work on the turtleneck. So each of these sleeves with the contrast is made up of three parts. We have a small piece which is the top and then we have the contrast in the middle and we're going to sew it to the main piece at the bottom. So at the straight edge of the top piece you're going to see notches. There's a centre notch and a double notch at one side. Now it's important that we sew the sleeve to the correct side. Um, you don't want your sleeves not matching properly. So take one of the contrast pieces and work out where the centre notches and where the double notches are to one side. So place the upper sleeve and the middle sleeve right sides together and we want to sew these together making sure when we sew them that the middle notch matches and that the double notches match on one side. So now at this lower edge I'm going to find the piece that matches. If you pick up the piece you'll find there's a centre notch and then there's double notches on one side. So just like we did earlier we need to make sure when right sides are together we're place placing the contrast piece at that upper edge and we're going to overlock that together matching those notches as we go. Now when we sew this garment we're not going to cut any fabric off with our blade, we're simply going to let that blade tidy up any of the raw edges as we go. side somewhere safe and just repeat the process with the other sleeve.
Now because I'm not going to use a cover stitcher what I'm going to do is overlock my hems because it's just really handy to do. Of course you can also twin needle them or do whatever preferred hem finish you want. And if you are going to use a cover stitcher you can just skip this step and cover stitch the hem at the end. Here are my turtleneck collar pieces. Um, let's just look at this piece for a moment. Now I've got a, a pair which means I've cut one out this way and one out that way. And it's really important that you get the stretch right here because this is going to need to go over your head. If your fabric is not stretchy enough this won't go over your head. Um, if you want to you could also cut this out of a contrast ribbing fabric that would be fine. So let's just look at this. On this longer edge we have notches. There's a notch to sew to the shoulder, to the centre front and to the other shoulder here and this is our centre back seam. So what we're going to do is take one of our pieces and fold it lengthwise so it's right sides together and we're going to overlock this angled edge here. And then repeat it for the other one. So this edge we overlocked here is the centre back neck. Now we need to sew these two together right sides together. So what I'm going to do is turn one of them right side out and the one I put right side out I'm going to place inside the other one and I'm going to match the overlocked edge. So now we want to overlock together this edge here, the neck edge. Now this is the shorter edge, not the long edge, the short edge. And it's a good idea when you overlock this to make sure the seams are facing in opposite directions. The other thing is directly opposite the overlock seam there you'll find a notch here you need to make sure they match as well and that will just help make sure that this goes on in the right place. So when you're ready overlock those two pieces together. And now turn that so that it is wrong sides together or right side out. Now if you're sewing this garment for your si yourself I strongly suggest before you attach it to the rest of your garment go ahead and put this over your head and just make sure it will stretch over your head. Um, and recover so sometimes it's best to make sure your fabric has some sort of lycra which is also called spandex or elastane for recovery. So just make sure that will fit over your head before you go any further. So for the contrast front view we have three pieces an upper front, a middle front which is the contrast and then the lower front. So take your upper front and right side together place it to the top edge of the middle front and we're going to overlock that together and in the middle you'll see a notch so just make sure the notches match. So 
So now we're going to place this piece to the upper edge of the lower front, right sides together and overlock that. In the middle you'll also find a notch to match. So now we're going to look at view B. So this is the front with the slash in it. So we have two pieces. We have an upper front and a lower front. And I'm going to sew the shorter version for this. So here is the upper front. So to prepare the front piece, what you need to do is overlock this curve edge. Now we need to turn it up by a centimeter and stitch it down. So if you have access to a cover stitch machine, what you can do is just turn, press this at one centimetre, which is three eighths of an inch, and cover stitch it down. Or if you're going to twin needle it, do the same thing. So what I'm going to do is overlock the curve. Then I'm going to go to my iron and I'm going to press this up by one centimetre, three eighths of an inch, and then I'm going to stitch it down. But while I'm here, <laughs> we're going to do the same thing for the lower front piece. I'm going to overlock the curve, then I'm going to press it and stitch it into position. Right, so I'm going to start with the upper front on view B and I've pressed this hem into position at one centimeter. So if you prefer, you can sew that down from the back rather than the front, up to you. So what we want to do is stitch through the overlocking line. Now let's sew the lower front. Right. So take your work, place your back right side up take your front and place it right side up on top. Now, if we have a look at the front, there's a small notch here at the lower edge, and there's a small notch here at the lower edge of the other piece. So what we want to do is match those notches together. And then we want to um, tack stitch this down. So we want to tack stitch this together within the seam allowance. So the seam allowance is six mil, which is quarter of an inch. So what I want you to do is just to tack stitch that following the curve of the armhole. So that's three mil or an eighth of an inch. And we'll come to the other side. We're going to do exactly the same thing. Now when you sew this together, make sure you're maintaining that lovely curve of the armhole or your sleeve won't sew in nicely. Right, so this is our slash. Now the next step we need to do to make sure that this doesn't fly open too much um, because it is a winter garment, is we're going to stitch that down just a short way. What we're going to do is just position your work so that it is nicely flat and what will happen is you'll see where it starts to cross over. So what we want to do is we're going to stitch directly on top of the previous line of stitching 
and we're only going to go through here about oh seven and seven and a half centimeters so that's about three inches and we just want to make sure that one the top layer is held on to the bottom layer so that our split doesn't split too much and we've got some stability and modesty so back tack there and just follow your line of stitching up and you'll see and you'll actually feel where it finishes so where it finishes just back tack off again just make sure that those two layers are secured as you can see that's held that together and do exactly the same thing on the other side for exactly the same distance and this can be a little bit tricky so if you need to just measure out so I've just and we just want to make sure it's all sitting nice and straight. Okay, so now this front is ready to be sewn in and just follow the rest of the video for the next steps. Now if you're sewing the shorter length which is the straight hem you can skip this step but if you're sewing the longer length with the split what we need to do now is come to the hem edge and you'll see some notches. There's a notch just up from the hemline which will show us the hem turn position and then as we come up again you'll see another notch which shows us the top of the split. We need to overlock from around about two inches, two or three inches, so between five and seven centimeters above the notch all the way through to the hemline. So it's just a rough estimate, doesn't have to be perfect, but around about five centimeters, two inches. So just overlock from that position to the hem. And do exactly the same on the other side. Now because I'm here I'm also going to overlock my hem into position. Sorry I mean I'm going to overlock on the raw edge because I'm going to use a stitch on my plain sewer to stitch my hem into place. If you're using a cover stitcher you could skip this step and of course you could use a twin needle. So now we're going to work on the back piece. Now this is the longer view. If you're sewing the shorter view, you can skip this step. But what we're going to do is find the notch at the hemline, the upper notch here, and we're going to overlock from around about five, seven centimeters above this, so two or three inches down to the hemline, just like we did on the front piece. and the same on the other side. And now because I did it for the front, I'm also going to overlock the raw edge of my hem. So now we're going to overlock the shoulders. So take your back and place it right side up and then take your front and if you're using the plain version just follow this too. We're going to place the front to the back at the shoulders and we're going to overlock them together making sure our fabric is right sides together and match the beginning and end. Thank you. 
So after you've sewn one shoulder, just go straight across and sew the other one. So I'm going to overlock the collar into position now. If you're uncomfortable with overlocking this collar, what you can do is go to your plain sewer and sew a line of stitching within the seam allowance. So our seam allowance is 6mm, which is quarter of an inch, so around about 1 8 of an inch or 3mm from the edge. And just hold these two layers together because you might find it easier um, to help manipulate it into the neck of the garment. Now, as you wear the garment, those stitches, because they're basting stitches, they're going to snap. So either you can remove them, which is a pain, or when you sew those two pieces together, make sure you do it in a thread that matches the color of your fabric, and then you won't even notice that the stitches were there to begin with. Okay, so what I've done is just sewn a line of basting stitches, and as you can tell, the tension isn't correct or anything like that. So I just did that with my plain sewing machine, literally just to hold these two pieces together while I'm showing you how to put the turtleneck collar in. Um, they are going to snap when the garment's worn, um, and I've done it in white so you can see it also because it's going to be easy to remove if I want to, but I usually don't tend to remove them. Um, Right, so decide which collar, which way you want to be the right side of your collar. So if you've had any problems with it, now's the chance um, to put them right. So I'm pretty happy with that. So this is going to be the right side of my collar. So I'm going to put my collar into the neckline of my garment. So that this is right sides together. And I'm going to match the seam of my collar to the centre back of my garment, so the centre back neck. So I'll just pop a pin in there. Now as we go around the collar, you'll see there's notches. That notch matches to the shoulder seam. And when you overlock that, make sure that that seam faces towards the back. Now the notch directly opposite the centre back seam of our collar is the centre front neckline, so make sure you match that to the centre front notch on your garment. And then our next notch matches to the other shoulder. So now let's overlock this into our garment. Um, it's always easier to overlock it with the collar on the top and I'm going to start just to one side of a shoulder. Now we need to make sure that we go through all three layers. And remember if you have put pins in to take them out because um, pins will smash your needles and they'll cause damage. So. So now we're going to sew the sleeve into our garment and our sleeve is not symmetrical so you need to sew the right sleeve into the right side. So take one of the sleeves and on one side of this contrast piece you'll see double notches. So that shows us the back of the sleeve. So take this and then take your garment and make sure you match that double notch to the double notches on the back of the garment. So for me the double notches are here and this will match in like so. And there's a 50-50 chance of getting this right and you can guarantee no matter which one you pick up it'll always be the wrong one. Alright, so when we are overlocking this sleeve into place we want to make sure that these seams 
on the insert piece face towards the hemline of the sleeve or the bottom of the garment. Right. So you're going to have double notches that match there. And then as we come to the top of the sleeve, there'll be a notch here, which is the crown notch, and that's going to match to our shoulder seam there. And then this matches on the other side. So you will need to ease this in as you go. The key with ease on sleeves is to make sure there is no ease well there shouldn't be any ease unless it's a pattern or design unless it's a design issue from here to here so all you need to do is overlock the first 10 centimeters four inches and then all the ease should be between around about the back and the front pitch points towards the crown so I always like to overlock with my sleeve on top Now these seams here won't necessarily match depending on the size you've chosen to sew. You might find it easier if they do match to make sure one faces back or down and one faces up, which is forwards. That'll just help reduce bulk. So once you put one sleeve in, go ahead and repeat that for the sleeve on the other side. So now we're going to sew the underarm seam and the side seam all in one. So come to the hem area of the sleeve and fold it right sides together. So the main thing we need to think about is making sure that our underarm seams match when we get there and you'll find it easier if you make sure the seams face in different directions because there'll be less bulk. Now as you come down the side seam, you're going to come to the area that you previously overlocked. So I want you to overrun it for about an inch, two or three centimeters, and then just run your overlocking off. And now do the same on the other side.
So now we need to work with a plain stitch on a sewing machine. So make sure you have a ball or a stretch needle in here. Um, also you might need to lengthen your stitch length and adjust your tensions. So before you start sewing, get two pieces of scrap fabric and adjust your tensions until the tension is correct. Um, generally if you have a problem with the lower part of your, if the thread looks odd on the bottom, it's an upper issue and if it looks funny on the top it's a bobbin issue. So most of the time if you have any issues with tension it will be the upper tension. Alright so come to the lower body hem area. So you'll be able to see your notches through your overlocking. So this notch here is your hem turn position and this is our split top position. What we're going to do is sew a seam one centimetre which is three eighths of an inch directly opposite this notch position here we're going to continue it up until it meet, meets here on the side of our overlocking so what we're going to do is graduate from a one centimetre three eighths of an inch to a six mil quarter of an inch seam so I'll do it from the overlocking edge down to show you so just start on the side of the overlocking and I apologise that this is in black because it will be a little bit harder to see. I should have thought about that before I chose my fabrics. And we're going to just angle this, we're going to start with the back tack and just sew down on the side of that overlocking and then find that notch position. And there's mine there. And we're going to go out by one centimetre and stop directly opposite that notch. And then back tack. And while I'm here, trim back this overlocking thread to around about an inch, which is two and a half centimetres. And I'm just going to um, stitch a couple of stitches to hold that overlocking thread down so just back tack that into place right so now we're going to deal with the split we now have a one centimeter seam allowance from the hem up so you might find this easier if you um, do this from the back and you might find it easier as well if you um, press this into place first so press the seam allowances on either side of those that split as one centimetre, three eighths of an inch. So I'll do this from the back of the garment so you can see it easier. I'm going to trim that thread back to about an inch and I'm just going to tuck that thread there within that seam allowance. So starting on the edge at one centimetre, I'm going to sew directly through the overlocking stitches. I'm going to start with the back tack and stitch up towards the split. I'm going to stop just up from the top of the split with the needle down. I'm going to lift, turn and pivot and I want to sew just across the top of the split to the same position on the other side. There and I'm going to lift, turn and pivot again. I'm going to clip that off, tuck that up and stitch down to the hem and back tack and that is our beautiful split. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side.
So now we're going to sew the body hem. If you have a cover seamer, a cover stitcher, just go ahead and put that into place now. So our hem position is, so, is shown by our notches. So all we're going to do is find that notch there and turn that up. And you might find it easier if you iron this into place. I'm going to sew mine from the back of the garment. And I'm going to sew directly through the overlocking line. Now because I'm going to mimic the look of a cover stitcher, I'm going to sew another seam parallel to the first on the folded side. So now let's sew the other hem into place. Now if you're sewing the um, straight hem view, the shorter view, all you'll need to do is turn to the wrong sides, so the wrong sides are together and stitch down and make sure you start and finish at a side seam. So now we're going to sew our sleeve hems, we're going to trim our thread back, our overlocking thread back, tuck that to the inside, find the hem notch there and the hem notch for the sleeves is exactly the same position as for the um, body hem and that is one and a half centimetres and one and a half centimetres is nine sixteenths of an inch and I'm going to stitch through the overlocking line to do the hemming. Now bear in mind if you are using a plain stitch on a sewing machine the seam um, will snap or crack or break whatever you want to call it um, if you are under too much pressure with your hand there. So it's a really good idea to use either a stretch stitch on a domestic machine or a twin needle or a cover stitch machine if you have access to one. because I um, sewed that as a two layered stitch on the hem I'm going to go and sew a second row of stitching parallel to the first on the folded side on the sleeve hems as well and I'm starting at the underarm seam So go ahead and just snip any stray threads and do some quality control work and then give your garment a light press with your iron. Now check on spare fabric before you iron just to make sure you're not going to cause any damage to your fabric and uh, then you're finished. So thanks for joining me.
don't forget to join my Facebook pattern discussion group and you'll be able to see other garments that people have sewn. And um, if you want to buy this pattern, just jump across to my website, www.trishnewbery.com, T-R-I-S-H-N-E-W-B-E-R-Y.com, and you can buy my patterns exclusively there. Thanks very much, and I hope you can join me again soon.